The number of death penalty cases in Ohio is down dramatically this year. A survey of the numbers of capital punishment indictments statewide shows only nine cases so far this year compared to 36 last year. And the number is down significantly from 2002 when there were just over 100 death penalty cases in Ohio and it's plummeted from a recent high of 144 in 1997. Since it became a state, Ohio has executed more than 390 convicted murderers, 52 since Cleveland killer Wilford Berry became the first person to be executed after capital punishment resumed in 1999. Three of those executions happened this year. But in the last few years, a growing number of high-profile officials have brought up serious concerns about executions in Ohio. Perhaps most notably, Justice Paul Pfeiffer, who helped write the Ohio death penalty statute when he was in the state Senate. Pfeiffer was on this show in January 2012, talking about his concerns about how the death penalty law he helped create was being applied in Ohio. There have been several proposals to institute a moratorium on executions till the process can be further studied, and even bills brought forward to ban the death penalty outright, as 18 states have done. The most recent was introduced last week. All this has raised optimism among advocates who have been arguing against the death penalty for years, including Ohioans to stop executions. Kevin Werner is that group's executive director, and he's here to talk about the issue. So in spite of the high-profile people who've spoken out, Justice Pfeiffer, um, Terry Collins, the former uh, DRC warden and director, uh, the sponsors of the bills that have hoped to either put a moratorium or end the death penalty have been Democrats. Democrats are not in power right now. These bills have not gotten a whole lot of traction. Do you really hope that something will happen with the death penalty now? Is this something that you're pinning your hopes on? Well, for sure, the uh, the legislation that was introduced by uh, representatives Antonio and, and Ramos, uh, there is a, a Republican uh, who's on that, uh, a co-sponsor. Um, and so uh, I think more importantly, what's going to happen is we're going to begin a, a very important uh, and serious discussion about the future of Ohio's death penalty. Uh, for about the last two years, the Supreme Court um, has been reviewing uh, the process, uh, the death penalty task force, and, um, and what they're finding overwhelmingly is that the criticism of Ohio's death penalty system uh, that, that first came, uh, I think, most prominently in 2007, uh, the American Bar Association released a, a report that cited 93% uh, of the, fair, of the uh, guidelines, rather, to ensure fairness and accuracy were missing from Ohio's death penalty statute. So for the last two years, the, the Supreme Court has been reviewing. Uh, there will be some recommendations coming, I think, probably in the uh, first few months of 2014. And um, ultimately, uh, the death penalty system in Ohio, I, I believe, will be repealed. It's a question of uh, when the legislature comes to the same conclusion that uh, Justice Pfeiffer, former Attorney General Jim Petro, former uh, Justice Evelyn Stratton, uh, former uh, Department of Corrections heads, um, that we just don't need the death penalty anymore. Uh, and, and a lot of that is because it is a system that's, that's unfair, uh, that, that often takes decades to conclude. And at the end of the day, murder victims' family members are not being served. So it will be repealed. It's a question of when. I'm wondering, though, with the numbers of death penalty indictments dropping over the last couple of years, why do you need a law? Why not just wait and let the process work out? Because death penalty cases are expensive. They, they are very costly to families as well as to the state. And why not let the system just work it out that way rather than trying to have a ban? Sure. Well, uh, the reason that the law needs to be repealed um, and why all of the task force recommendations need to be fully implemented is because even if we let the system work itself out, there are people on Ohio's death row today, we question whether or not they're they are in fact guilty of the crimes they committed. Uh, because of the way that it's applied from one county to the next, uh, uh, Hamilton County Prosecutor Joe Dieters uh, talks about this a lot. Um, the numbers of indictments that are coming out of Cuyahoga County as compared to, say, uh, uh, Hamilton County, uh, they, they just don't make any sense. And so what we will have, if we continue to allow the system to try to work itself out, uh, the underlying problems are not addressed. Uh, and we continue to see uh, instances where we're executing people who are seriously mentally ill. Uh, we're continuing to see uh, executions that go forward uh, when there are last minute um, questions raised as to whether or not uh, someone is, is guilty or innocent. And so from a process standpoint, 
those corrections need to be made at the front end of the system. That, that's one thing that the task force really focused on was uh, that the trial ought to be the main event and not uh, the, the 25 or 30 years of appeals. Um, if we don't address the system now, uh, what we're going to continue to see is uh, cases that work their way through the appeals process and they get overturned, they get resentenced, uh, and then all of a sudden the murder victim's family members who were, who were promised justice, uh, what they don't have is they don't have a justice system that's swift and that's certain. And making some of these corrections, uh, it's not going to root out all the problems, but it's going to make it a much fairer and just uh, system. I've said it in a lot of clemency hearings, and you hear a lot about um, the childhood that these folks experienced, a lot of abuse, a lot of neglect. You mentioned mental illness, and, and there's a lot of that discussion in there, too. But there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of public sympathy for folks in these positions. And I'm wondering, how do you change the public's attitude so you don't have the public saying, good, this person's getting what they deserve? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I think when it comes down to it, uh, when we look at the numbers, uh, I'm a person who is, is convinced by numbers. And when we operate a system that roughly has, has initiated somewhere in the ballpark of 3,400 capital cases over the 33 years, uh, we, we're left with about 312, 316 actual sentences. Um, of those 312, uh, about 40% uh, get overturned or get changed or commuted or, or result in some other outcome than a person being executed. And so from a public policy standpoint, when we look across the whole spectrum, what we see is that 95% of the cases that are initiated, so I'm, I'm going back to an even a larger number, 95% of those cases do not result in the outcome we want, which is uh, having a person sentenced to death. And so if we're operating a system that fails nine times out of 10, uh, the better public policy, I think, is to put the resources where they're needed. And that has to do with fully funding uh, members of the law enforcement community so they can keep our community safe. Uh, and also has to do with what are the needs of the, the murder victims. Um, at the outset of a capital trial, I don't think any murder victim's family member wants to go through uh, 20 or 25 years of a process. And so it, it's about putting forth the needs of the, of the family members and understanding that even though the intention may be uh, well-meaning, um, it, it's not in the long run. I want to ask you finally, uh, you've said the only predictable thing about Ohio's death penalty is that it is unpredictable. And that's certainly been the case in the last couple of years. In the last uh, th five years, we've changed the way that executions are performed in Ohio three times. Mm -hmm. And there have been a lot of last minute things that have happened here. So I, I'm just wondering if you feel like that there's any, any progress being made on that unpredictability and if, if that's just part of the whole system. I think it's part of the whole system. Um, I think we acknowledge that, that human beings run the system and so it, it will always be prone to mistakes. Uh, but certainly what we've seen in the last few years, um, Ohio has scheduled executions and then about half of them actually take place. Um, and that, that's due to a whole host of reasons. Uh, some of that has to do with uh, ongoing litigation that's been happening within. That, that's what happened in my sure. case. I yeah. witnessed Wilford Berry, and yeah. there were at least two or three yeah. situations where the last minute legal challenges pro postponed the execution. Right, that's right. And I think that uh, as long as we, we're getting into this area where we're experimenting, I mean, the, the new protocol that's uh, on the books now, so, so to speak, um, it's never been done anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, and so we're really tinkering with the machinery of death, and, and I think that that is only going to continue to raise problems and to raise issues. Um, one of the things that I, I think about uh, often is the impact of asking a state employee to carry out a job that no one really wants to do. And so we have to make part of the conversation the impact that this takes on, on corrections employees. Um, you know, we, we also see problems because the folks who are carrying out the executions, and, and it's a job that, that I, I could never do, um, you know, are they trained professional medical experts? And the answer to that we know is no. And so I would argue that taking a person who is uh, living, breathing normally, uh, one moment to uh, not the next is a rather complex medical procedure. And so there are all kinds of ethics involved. One of the um, things that the Department of Corrections wanted to do and, and uh, has done is to um, ask that physicians be part of this process. 
Um, and, and immediately when that proposal was put forth, the State Medical Association said, no, we, we're not going um, to go down that road. And so um, we as a, as a society don't handle uh, death well. Uh, and I think that those problems manifest themselves in the execution chamber, whether that's long-term impact on, on the corrections officials themselves, uh, all the way down to how are we going to find these drugs. Uh, the manufacturers are saying, no, uh, you can't use these drugs. Uh, we're, that's not what they were purposed for. And so um, we're going to continue to see these kinds of problems in the future. All right, Kevin Warner from Ohioans to Stop Executions. Thank you very much. Thank you.